Hey, it's Captain Matt, Boater Secret Weapon, and I'm here with a video about your VHF MMSI number. So, is your VH radio, VHF radio connected so that if you are in an emergency, you can use the special distress signal that's on your VHF radio, whether it's a, a, a mounted version or a mobile version, you can get what they call an MMSI number, a Maritime Mobile Service Identification Number. It's like the phone number for your vessel. It runs through the Digital Selective Calling, DSC, which is channel 70, I believe, on your VHF radio. But what it will do when you set it up properly is you press that single button that's under that little red hinged flip thing on your VHF radio on the newer ones, and it will automatically send your vessel information as well as your GPS coordinates if you have it hooked up properly. When you do that, it will blast out to everybody within range via a data message, which has a longer range than voice, which means if you get in a very bad situation, things are going terrible quickly, hit that button, you get all that detail out, and then you can make your radio call you can handle the emergency. You can do what you need to do. So let's talk about how you get your MMSI number because there's a process you go through and you have to take these steps and there's some things you need to know. So it's a nine digit number that you'll get and it will be attached to the VHF radio and link to your boat, not to you as an individual, but to the actual boat. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So in the USA, so this is strictly for the United States, the National Telecommunications Administration provides those for federal users, which are those that are required to have it because of their FCC license, uh, because of their their um, uh, merchant marine, um, you know, it's a, a ship type thing. But for us pleasure boaters, it runs through the FCC, and they're the ones that are going to provide it, and it's only for use in U.S. waters. So if you're traveling into international waters, then you need to do an additional step and register in a, an additional way. But for U.S. boating waters, there's three ways that you can register. The first one is with Boat U.S. If you're a member, it's free. If you are not a member, it's 25 bucks. The American Boating Club are the former U.S. Power Squadron. That's what they used to be called. It's free there. It takes you about, oh, maybe a minute. Um, I, I've done it myself, and I'll, I'll show you the process. And then Shine Micro, they're actually a provider of AIS systems, the automatic information system, which is on the radar. It'll actually identify your MMSI information on the radar screen. So if you're if you're looking at a radar, it'll say, oh, this is a, a 34 C ray that's white and blue. Um, and, and these are the this is the the call sign of it or whatever. Um, if you don't have that AIS system, then go to the American Boating Club. I, I think that's probably the best for most people. If you're a Boat US member, I'm sure they make it very easy as well. Um, but there's no reason to pay the 25 bucks if you don't need to. This is what it looks like. So you put in your vessel name. If you haven't named your vessel, just give it a name, e even if it's uh, you know the make and model of it. Your radio call sign, if you have it, put it in. If you're not an FCC um, licensed communicator, you probably won't have a radio call sign. And your vessel wireless number, so your cell phone is what I would put in there. If there's other cell phone numbers of people that use that boat consistently that will be on the boat, put those in. The ship classification, there's a whole big long list of them, and it can get confusing. So I, I listed the four that I think people listening to this channel will need. Motorboat is any motorized fiberglass center console, bow rider, deck boat, cruiser, uh, or no, not cruiser, um, pontoon, obviously pontoon cruisers, cruisers, cuddy cabins, and yachts, uh, although they do have a separate category for yacht if you're above uh, 50, 60 feet is kind of where that um, where that mark is. And then paddlecraft, canoe, kayaks are also included in there. Then your information. And then if it's under a business, so this is for, you know, if you're running a charter operation or things like that, there may be captains on the boat, you would put that in there. The previous vessel names, if you rename the vessel. And then these are the, the ones I think you'll need to kind of prepare for. Your EPIRB. If you have an EPIRB that's on the boat, 
or that's a portable one that will be on you and you'll be on the boat most of the time, put that EPIRB identification number in there. That way, if they get the DSC call and your MMSI information is, is shared, they'll also then be looking for that EPIRB. And if that EPIRB's in, they'll say, oh, crap, we've got a verified situation. They're going to do their thing and they're going to do it even quicker. Your vessel registration number, so your your state, you know, SC12345 AB or whatever that is, your home port, if you don't officially, if you're not a federally registered boat, your home port would just be the main body of water that you run out of or your marina, uh, your home port city, and then your vessel capacity. Uh, you know, what's your, what's your boat U.S. Coast Guard rated for? So it may be 8, 10, 12. If it's over 26 foot, it may be yacht certified. Um, and then you just put in the normal number of people or the max number of people that you would put on your boat. What that gives them is, are we looking for four people? Are we looking for a max of 12 people? What's that look like? And then your emergency contact information. Who do you want them to contact if if there is, if you have a distress, you hit that button and they need to contact somebody on land, who would they contact and reach out and say, hey, we're, we're doing a search pattern uh, for this vessel and we you were notified on the information. Um, and then no query response. Hey, what what if nobody's responding? And then if you have a special radio installed that's tracking, that that's not going to apply to most people here. Uh, that's going to be more for commercial shipping. Now, what happens is, and you'll get this instantly through the, the U.S. Um, Power Squadron or American Boating Club, which is they re rebranded le recently, you're going to get your MMSI number. So that's your phone number for your boat now. Your vessel name. You've got the certificate that you can print, put in your paperwork, so you always have it, and the date updated. So if you need to update your contact information, if you need to update your home port, if you need to update your emergency contacts, um, you can go in there, just log back in. It's real easy to do. Click edit and then resubmit, and it'll automatically update now to the Coast Guard database. Coast Guard database has these numbers in it. If that distress signal comes through, they can say, oh, this is this boat, this owner, this home port. The, if you've got it hooked up properly or your VHF has built-in GPS, which a lot of the handheld ones do, the uh, mounted ones can easily hook into your, your GPS system uh, with the NEMA cable. Well, if you haven't watched my other video, watch, watch that on things you may not know about your VHF radio. You can hook those up, and now you're, you'll have GPS coordinates automatically sent from the location of your distress and then um, it, it'll give you that confirmation instantly online and then you'll also get an email with that information and that MMSI number is unique to your boat attached to your VHF radio so remember if it's a mobile VHF radio and you take it on your buddy's boat they forgot theirs or theirs wasn't charged up and you hit that distress signal it's going to send your GPS coordinates, which is good, but it's also going to send the wrong vessel information because it's it's attached through the radio to your boat. And if that radio gets on a different boat, it's the radio is not going to know. It's not going to be smart. And then the other thing you need to know along those lines is if you sell your boat, what you need to do is you need to go in and you need to cancel that number because it's going to be attributed to that particular vessel, right? The registration number, uh, the boat name all of that information. And if you buy a new boat, you're going to go ahead and start a new number. So you're, you're not going to transfer your MMSI number to the new boat. You're going to cancel that one so that the, the next boat owner of that can take it. Um, and all you need to do is just when you sell your boat, you can give them that information and then you will register for a new one for your new boat or your second boat. You'll register for a new one, um, whatever the case may be. So remember that that number, once you get it, is attached to that boat. Just the VHF radio is the connector between the boat to the radio to the Coast Guard. Um, and that makes that distress signal so much more valuable, so much more helpful if you do ever get in that situation. If you're a first-time boater, check out the Boater Boot Camp, totally free, boaterbootcamp.com. Best boat captain on the water to give you better control of your boat and the Boat Buyer's Toolkit. If you're looking to buy a boat, that's totally free. BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. Smash that like button if you found this valuable and set up your MMSI number. If you've got a VHF radio, remember, life truly is better on a boat.